Namo Didafa. Good morning. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-ins. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The first mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life. I vow to cultivate compassion and learn ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I'm determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to condone any act of killing in the world, in my thinking, or in my way of life. For our Dharma lessons, we've been reading a book by the nuns of Amaravati called The Body, Dhamma Reflections on Aging, Sickness, and Death. And right now we're in a Dhamma talk by Ajahn Kandasiri called Meeting Death. Sometimes people think they're going crazy when they come on retreat. They have crazy thoughts and weird images arising in the mind. I always think of this as part of the general spring cleaning and nothing at all to worry about. Some people ask about unusual body sensations, the heart beating very fast, or feelings of strange energies in the body. These two are things that can arise when the mind quietens down a bit, and again, they're nothing to worry about. The only concern would be if they were so very pleasant that we become attached to them and then spent the rest of our life trying to get them back again. That would be unfortunate. In meditation, all kinds of things can arise visions of light, or hearing unusual sounds, or having strange bodily sensations. These are all just things to notice, to be aware that they've arisen, and noticing also their cessation. Some people experience such things, some people don't. The cultivation of mindfulness, this way of establishing a strong sense of presence, is a very valuable cultivation. Some people do retreats simply so that they can experience the calm mind, and they attach great importance to that. But that sense of calm is dependent on quite particular conditions. Long hours of meditation, external quiet, and all kinds of other very specific conditions that enable and support a sense of calm. And while I have absolutely nothing against those experiences, it is clear to me that in some ways they are quite limited, because we can't spend the whole of our life living under such conditions. We have to interact with other people. Even living in a monastery, there's an enormous amount of interaction. Most people have jobs. Many people also have family responsibilities. And many live in situations where those around them are not particularly interested in meditation. And so we need to consider how the practice can be sustained in a meaningful way. As I've already said, one of my absolutely favorite suttas is the Discourse on the Greatest Blessings. This was the Buddha's response to a Devada, a heavenly being who came to visit him early one morning. It is said that this was the time of day that the Buddha used to give instructions to the Devadas. So this particularly radiant being came and asked him what it is that brings most happiness. The Buddha listed quite a number of conditions. For example, associating with good people, having a suitable means of livelihood, something that doesn't involve any kind of dishonesty or harm, having respect for one's parents and caring for them if that's necessary, caring for one's family, keeping the precepts, avoiding intoxication or unskillful behavior, cultivating patience, gratitude, and contentment, and contemplating the teachings. And the final verse, which is the one I really like, the Buddha says, Though living in the world, the heart does not tremble. It is free from sorrow, confusion, and need. I find it so inspiring that there is the possibility of maintaining a sense of stability in the world, where we have to experience so many different things, good and wonderful things, but also very difficult things or terrible things that can shake the heart. 
agitating it or making it flutter or tremble. We call those things the worldly winds. But we see that through mindfulness, we do have the possibility to hold steady even when the strongest wind is blowing. Now, I don't think that this means we don't have feelings. I hope not, anyway. But more that we can maintain a balanced perspective with what we are experiencing. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. Sadhu. 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 Thank you for joining me this morning.